How you doing? Oh, no bro, no bro. Come on, how you doing? Okay. <laughs> Easy way to get down here. <clears throat> the guy, he's definitely this morning. He said that he'll be out here sometime today. If he doesn't get a chance to come out today, then <clears throat> he'll be out here Monday. Oh, so he's going to go ahead and knock it out? Yeah, yeah, he's going to go ahead and do that. Um, he asked if we could... This is on a slab, right? That I mean, um, or is there a cross space? It's cross space. Cross space. Oh, okay. Um, I told him that we would leave the door unlocked for him down here. He'll get underneath okay. the house. Oh, wow. It looks really good. I just know I was recording. I, doc I document my stuff for... Yeah. To... Wow, it looks really good. Yeah. Yeah, well, instead of having them just do the, um, the rails... Mm -hmm. Really good. So I think they'll be uh pleasant. Satisfied. <laughs> oh wow. She'll be super happy about it. <clears throat> That's really good. Did you did you do it or you had somebody out here? Um I had another a company do it. Oh okay, they did great. They did awesome. Um Lo Lopez, I don't know if you remember Lopez Brothers Construction. They um they had lifted that up and they replaced all the the wood all that wood that was bad back there uh -huh. and then they put some a fresh coat of paint and everything on there. Mhm. Mm so now we're just waiting for the uh, on their end the final inspect inspection. Yeah. Inspector's supposed to come out yesterday, but they were busy, so he supposed to come out today. Hopefully, come out today. But they did great. They did awesome. They'll be very satisfied because the, the last time they seen it was with the old everything else that was old, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, they'll love it. So you can uh I wasn't gonna see any pictures, but I wanted you to see it in person. I know it looks a lot better in person. <laughs> <laughs> it looks a lot better in person. So you can get your pictures, you can send them to them like, hey I gotta Yeah, I know. I was like, dang, this is super good. <clears throat> yeah, they're gonna do their final inspection probably. What Pretty dry. I'm gonna step on it. But I will be using them again them. for the future, right? Yes, ma'am. I'm impressed. If I had the extra money, what I would have, um, I'm gonna suggest it to them because I'm gonna write a letter, a thank you letter. Yeah. Is it closes in and then make this almost an extension of the house, like an outdoor eating area? Oh, yeah, like a little patio. Mm hmm. Yeah. You put close it in, you put some windows right there and everything. That'd be super cute. Yeah, they did a great job. I don't know right down there. Wait, you said it was Lopez Construction or Lopez Brothers Construction. They're on Facebook also. Okay, I'll pull them up. And I'm assuming they just do like porches and decks and things like that. Um, from my understanding they do everything. If they don't, then they have a they know somebody that mm -hmm. probably use that's how it goes. Yeah, it looks really good. They did great. Yeah, they will definitely be impressed. Yeah, we had a few issues at the beginning trying to hash the deal out because they didn't want me to buy materials and everything. I'm like, <laughs> at first I said, yeah. Then I was like, I said, well, I can just buy my own materials and they want to change the deal and we're going to go back and forth. I was like, look, we're going to get this deal done or not. But they want me to give them money up front and I wasn't comfortable giving them. They want like 50% up front. I'm like... You don't want to. You don't want to start the job because you're risking 
you know, me not paying you, but then you want me to give you fifty percent of the money or front of the labor. You're risking yeah. not doing the job. Yeah, yeah. like hey, I, I don't I don't know you, you don't know me. Yeah. You know, they're talking about morals right there. What's we wanna talk about morals? I said, you know, I'm a pastor, so uh <laughs> we can talk about that, but you know, I don't know you, you don't know me, so Yeah. It goes both ways. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. I'm assuming that's the door that he's going to need to get under, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. Awesome. Yeah, no, um... And it's unlocked already? I, it may... It still may be locked. I'll lock when I come. There's a freezer. I think she's coming out here today as well, so they'll probably both be out here. But I told her that we would... I told her that we would leave it unlocked for them. Oh, is she coming early? <clears throat> Um, she just said that she'd be out here sometime Friday. Oh, wait, no, actually the 15th. I thought it was Tuesday. Oh, actually, yep, yeah, that's right. Oh. The 15th is Tuesday, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I got to keep but it's locked. Yeah, Wait, and then the termite guy, he said that he will be out here today, and if he doesn't get to it today, then he will be out here for it, um, for it on uh, Monday. Now, I don't know if it makes it easier for you, if you want me to just leave that key in the lockbox. I have, you, I have it. Okay. Yes, yeah, it's, it's up there. I just, I have it. Okay, perfect. Yeah. Cause I, when they had this, I had them, um, had them clean all that out. So. It, it's all getting clean, right? Yeah, that's how all, that, all the extra junk it had in there. Yeah. Okay. Now the furniture, are y'all gonna be, uh, y'all are gonna get that out a, a couple weeks before they move in? Mm -hmm. The couches and stuff. Okay, perfect. Yeah, I'm <clears> closer <throat> to um. The closing. Mhm. Mm official, official. Yeah, I think they got a. 28, we can close, they can close earlier than that, they want to. Yeah, I was going to say, we're ready to close. <laughs> yeah. That would be great if we could close earlier. I'm going to actually call her today and see where they are on the loan. Because I think that they have to have it closed in the next couple of weeks. Yeah. Okay. Um, and then the appraisal is the last part, you know. Which is Tuesday, and that's, it just, yeah. the so, inspection is already, the termite inspection is done, then the appraisal comes out Tuesday and appraises it more than, um, um, now I want to say this for the people that will end up listening to this. Both of us from yeah. well, how many years you've been doing real estate? This is my second two years now. Okay. Yeah, so I'm still fairly fairly new, but <clears throat> I've learned a lot in okay. the process for sure. <laughs> and from what you know and your research and everything, do you think this property is going to appraise at for what? more than what we what we have it listed at? Well. <clears throat> Like I say, appraiser, because the appraiser called me last week and stuff. And like I told her, I was like, you know, if there's something that happens and you don't have, um, you know, you can't find your comps to, you know, be able to appraise this at, at least the price we have at or up over, then I can send her comps, you mm -hmm. know. And so I usually try to help her out. And I've used this, I mean, we've used her before in a different listing. I don't, I don't get to choose the appraiser right now, but she's done, this is the second one. That she'll be doing for me so i think she'll be fine um finding the comps on her own but like i was telling her wife I, i'd be surprised if it doesn't you know appraise for oh, over what we have it listed at 100. and what do you what do you from your research Angie, what do you think is going to appraise at i mean it might appraise at like 110 i know it's not going to appraise at a crazy price of course because there's not you know of course there's not a lot of newer homes like this one around mm -hmm. here but um it'll all appraise a, a little over than what we have it listed at but that'll just give the buyer some equity and stuff. So it'll, you know, it'll be great for them. It'll be great for whenever you try to build another one mm -hmm. and resell it. That's going to really help you out. Yeah, and that's what I was, that's what I was saying, y'all. That um, me coming in at the price point um, was, it was a bigger picture. Mm -hmm. um, not just to provide affordable housing, but also with some of the future things. I'm, me personally, I think, I'm going to say 120. I'm hoping 120, 125 because... Yeah. Obviously, that would be, you know what I'm saying? That would be great for, you know, your, you know what you're going to do next. Mm -hmm. And if anybody else tries to sell their house later on down the road over here, it'll really help them out if they do some improvements to their homes, too. So. Exactly, exactly. And then this one, this, you know, that's how it starts. You know, one house appraises for more than what we have it listed at. And then the next one, the next one, that's how you up bring, you know, a straight up. Exactly. Well, this right here to me, it already went up from a hundred thousand to one. Say, even this, like just even this, I mean, it might. I know it's gonna appraise for more, so I'm I'm curious to see what it appraises for because yeah. it's all brand new, you know. Yeah. And one reason I went ahead and just redid it because I was thinking in my mind like, okay, if I just did the rails, then it's not gonna 
you're not gonna get the max value on the appraisal. Yeah. So I said, let me go to go ahead and spend the money, yeah. forward and everything, and get it right so we can set that baseline for the next properties and for stuff the next like that. One, yeah, yeah, for sure. It'll increase the value of your properties, whatever Absolutely. you're trying to do next. So. Mm -hmm. It'll yeah. be good. It looks really good though. Oh um, yeah. I'm sure. Was your did your wife? Your I'm sure your wife's already seen it. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Hey, she's was seen it. Done it. Whenever I came out here, I don't. I don't know. No, they just did. This is it. Got done yesterday. Oh wow. Yeah. They, they did it in a day. They did it in three days. Like three days. Oh. Well, really two, because the first day was tear down, and then the the um, like next day? yeah. Three two days and then uh, they finished it up yesterday and everything that is crazy they did great so i'll yeah. definitely keep them in mind yeah you know let me say latinos and this, you I know, know say, i know y'all be arguing right. about latinos hispanics <laughs> and miss it. i'm not the you know yeah no. yeah that's yeah. a good thing about them they they don't mess around they get the work done yeah 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 <laughs> they have really good work ethic, uh, work ethic so oh yeah it's definitely good you gotta deal with you know darker people my you know say my own people trying to <laughs> not do right so, you know a lot of times to be honest and then you know you got the lot of persuasion people they <laughs> yeah. they are you know act, how they act sometimes <laughs> a lot of times but <laughs> hey, that, that, i'm glad they got the job done oh yeah that's all i care about look hey we can talk about all the rest of stuff on the back end yeah. <laughs> but other than that look hey, this is business <laughs> exactly this is business i'm good i'm glad but um and they could actually you know later on they could actually stain it to match Mm -hmm. Absolutely. You know. Absolutely. So. <sighs> you got to understand business. You got to understand the market, the area that you're in. I'm not an expert or master at business in that sense. I'm not an expert. I'm not a master in real estate. I will say that I I would consider myself an expert or a master in getting stuff done. And to me, that's that's a greater value. Being able to get stuff done, no matter it's real estate, no matter it's life, no matter what it is, are you able to get stuff done? Are you able to accomplish the task at hand? And for me, it's being able to accomplish the task righteously. And a lot of people, they accomplish stuff. They as, they, as we say, they're go-getters. They do get stuff done, but at what cost? I didn't get to ask her all the questions I wanted to ask her on camera because <clears throat> she had a daughter with her and the wind was blowing. And, you know, the wind was blowing. I don't know if y'all heard it. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I didn't want to keep them out here in that wind like that all that time. Next time, I, you know, I asked them, or I should say ask her more about her thoughts on what we're doing with affordable housing in general, um, especially in this market, because she has insight into more data than, than I may have access to. Also, I'm going to ask her, Also ask her um, <clears throat> her thoughts about the package that we are bringing forth with these affordable houses. But as you heard her say, the property is going to appraise for more than what we're selling it at. Like I told y'all, why is that good? Because the buyers, they're coming into a situation where they have positive equity already. That's a brand new deck. That's a brand new deck. Now, you got your cost, and then you got market cost, or I should say market value. You got your cost versus market value. Even though it may cost you X, Y, Z to rehab a house, the market value is going to be higher. Even though it costs me X, Y, Z to get that back deck done, the market value is going to be higher especially with it being brand new. Meaning that whatever else the house appraises at, because now you have that deck added, that's equity that they have. They get the roof done. That's more equity. Let's say it does appraise at $10,000. <coughs> now, excuse me, the in the um, appraiser hasn't, hasn't seen it yet. So as far as you know, the deck is already there. 
<clears throat> she's not coming into it thinking that there's no deck or the deck is raggedy. Whatever she sees is what she sees. She's going to praise it as, <coughs> excuse me, <clears throat> it must be that ginger in there. Um, she's going to praise it for whatever she pra appraises it for, right? <clears throat> Ooh. She's going to uh, come in and appraise it, right? Boom. It appraises it at 110. Let's just say for argument's sake, 110. The buyer's closing the house. They say, we want to get the roof done. They get the roof done. What the value now go to? It's going to cost almost $5,000 to get the roof done, depending on who they go to. Now you're looking at a $120,000, $125,000 value. Then they may come in and, um, and have some, some different you know, things they want to add to the house or whatever. That can add more value to it. Now you're pushing the 130 range. They may decide they want to come in and put a, you know, a driveway. I don't know how they would do it with it being so tight, but it's possible. Their house appraises for more than guess what? When I do properties here or there or there in the same area, because I'm setting the foundation with this house. I'm setting the foundation with this house. That's why we came in at the price point, because you can always add value to it in different ways. <clears throat> The roof adds value. Um, you can put a, a shed or you can put a um, ADU, accessory dwelling unit, in the backyard and rent it out. The value of the property is just one of even more. You got to think about these things. And when I write my letter to the, the new buyers, I'm going to tell them that and I'm going to suggest it. Like, you know, they thank you for uh, even considering us. Thank you for buying the property. Boom, boom, boom. These are some of the things about the house. This is the approximate property line. Some of the ideas that we had for it. You could possibly close in this back area and make it a extension of the house. You have enough land back here because it goes a long way to push it back, put up a fence, and add another unit that you can rent out if you decide to do that at a later date. You see what I'm saying? They, not, they may not have been thinking about that, but now they're like, oh yeah, we could do that. How much is it going to cost us? And then because I'm in the area, if something ever happens where they, they want to sell the house, then I'll come back and I'll buy the house from them. i buy it back from them, obviously, at a good rate. <laughs> And then turn around and, and sell it again. You know, if they, they haven't done anything, do it. You know, come come and fix up some of the stuff they may not have fixed up. You know, I don't know. We're not there yet. But let's say they get into the house and they don't really do anything. And then for whatever reason, a year from now, they got to get out of the house. They come in selling it. I buy back from them. Fix it up a little bit more. Clean it up because obviously you're going to need some type of cleaning. Um, with the family living in there, there's going to be some type of damage. That's just the way it is. And then resell it again. Or at that particular point in time, I may even keep it for myself. You know, use it as a as a rental property or Airbnb, which I really don't want to get into rental properties. But <clears throat> I think eventually certain properties, they will be rental, rental properties. Um, more so like, the duplex ideas I have. And it, just to give y'all some insight, <clears throat> the 16 by 50 that we're doing on the next property, I want to get, depending on, it depends on the land. It all depends on the land. But just to make it simple, you got a 16 by 50. You split it in half. What do you have? You have a 16 by 25. I want to do that. You have two units, each building. 16 by 25, all-inclusive, sweet type of um, one-bedroom, one-bath type of deal. Little kitchenette, refrigerator, boom, boom, boom. I want to have at least two of them on one property. That's four units. But depending on the land, I, I want to have like three units, which would be, well, three buildings, which would be six units. But at the minimum, two buildings which would be four units, then 
that would be the rental income and then use those type of things as rental income. But knowing me, I get it done and then I get it appraised and then I put it in the market to sell it. <laughs> Cause something like that, the investors, they will gobble it up. It's a, it's brand new. And because it's brand new, you're, you can charge higher rents. They're coming in, they'll be thinking, oh, one bedroom, one bath, suite, you get your own little private suite, own little private porch. We'll probably put a like a little porch on the back. Um they'll probably come in and charge something like that, like eight hundred dollars. I can see a building or a setup like that, this is a rough estimate, appraising or even selling around three hundred thousand, three hundred and fifty thousand. Just because of what it is. Let's do the math. If I'm able to be in it for half of that, or if I'm able to be in it for two hundred thousand, I'm using the money that I made from the other pro other projects to fund that, because it would all be laid out and I would know my cost up front, and my cost they're not gonna like fluctuate crazy, because I'm using the same buildings. Using the same business, all we're doing is splitting it. And it's really a matter of letting the city, you know, then tell me what I can or can't do and making sure that I'm to, uh, you know, saying to to their standards and everything. That's the main thing. The building part, that's going to be easy because I'm going to already be familiar with doing these buildings like that. But if I'm in it 150000 and I sell it for three hundred, three hundred twenty-five thousand, you talking some bigger numbers. And then... Knowing that, what do you think I'm going, to want to, I'm going to want to do? Let me get a bigger piece of land, and let's put it in phases. How many? How many can we do per acre or a half acre? How many would the city allow us to put on each plot of land? How big does that plot <coughs> plot of land have to be? How much is it going to cost me? Okay, let's phase it out. Let's Go ahead and get these started and then get these done, flip some properties, use that money to fund these, and then boom. Or I split it up and I have three plots of land. This one plot has uh, three buildings, which is six units. Sell that one, get the money from that one, then do the next one next to it, and then do the next one next to it. Or come to them and be like, look, this is what we got. Y'all want to get in on it? You want to, you know, you want to invest in it because y'all gonna buy them anyway. I don't know. I'm just thinking. When I get to that point, I know. <clears throat> but that's more money, which means more resources. Think about it. a resource is something you continue to tap into. Re, it replenishes itself. People are looking to be wealthy. I'm not looking to be wealthy. If I'm wealthy, <clears throat> my wealth is in the resources. If I'm wealthy, it's because RLD Inc. is wealthy. But RLD, RLD Inc. and me as the president, we want the resources. We want the resources. Once we have resources, then we can do different things. We can take those funds that we are getting from you know, these are uh, duplexes and be able to do more affordable houses, not only in this area, but us also other areas. Maybe one day we get to the point where we have a RLD Inc. subdivision, RLD estates, and all the properties are rental properties. And we use the funds that we've accumulated through the affordable houses to build this Massive rental rental complex where you got you got different type of houses. You got 3D printed houses. You got houses made, made out of hemp. You got a section where you have rammed earth houses. You got your traditional houses. Um, you have your duplex. You have your more affordable houses. You're going to have different sections and stuff like that. Um, we put a charging station in there for those who have electric vehicles. This is what I'm thinking. Why? If you have this massive rental complex and it's paid for, well, how are you going to pay for it? 
Once we get to a certain point, then I'll be able to flip a house, take some of those proceeds and use it to pay for a building or pay for a stage in the RLD estates. That's income coming in for RLD on a continual basis. If I ever step down as president, if I die, because we're all going to die, it's not if I die, but when I die, but if, you know, if I die once it's like halfway completed or, or even just getting into it, the vision can continue to go on. Or let's say that I live until it's completed and it's, it's thriving and we are, you know, just maintaining it and everything. The new president doesn't have to come in and be like, okay, we are low on funds and we can't do this, we can't do that. Now the vision is choked off. We have a rental, we have those rental properties. If I did a estates, it would all be rental properties. There may be one section and one section, this is an if. One section, if the circumstances are right where it is paid off. But as far as right now, my mindset is a RLD estates, complete rental properties going into RLD Inc. I die. It's still thriving. RLD Inc. still has resources coming in to continue doing what we are doing. New president steps in, boom, boom, boom. We're good to go. But I'm going to, um, what I got to do for the rest of the day? I got to get this wood from underneath this house and take it back to uh, to Lowe's so I can get my money. Hopefully the inspector comes out and checks this uh, deck out. I can go ahead and um, pay my contractor and then we'll be done with that part. And hopefully we can close on the house sooner. That would be awesome. The ins uh, termite inspection is supposed to be done today. Um, the appraiser is coming out Tuesday. There's really nothing left. Like she said, she just got to check on the, the status of the loan. There's, there's nothing, nothing left. Once that is done. We may even close faster on the property. That would be amazing. Y'all pray for me on that. Y'all pray for me on that.